In section 9.2, we'll be focusing on the introduction to circles. After watching this video, you will be able to begin solving problems involving circles, and this will better prepare you for the formal study of circles in chapter 10. Let's start off by finding the area of a circle. We know that we use the formula area equals pi r squared to find the area of a circle, but let's talk about where that comes from. In just a few moments, I will link us to a Mathematics Online YouTube video in which that video will demonstrate where this formula comes from. I'm going to narrate over this demonstration. Keep in mind the area of a circle is the space inside of the circle. But where does pi r squared come from? Let's start off with a circle. Let's take that circle and divide it into smaller equal pieces. And let's rearrange those equal pieces so that we create something that resembles a rectangle. Let's continue to divide the circle into smaller equal pieces and combine those pieces to create something that resembles a rectangle. If we continue this process of dividing the circle into even smaller equal pieces, we will get closer and closer to a rectangle which is what we want. But how far do we have to go? We have to continue to divide this circle into small equal pieces, into infinitely many small equal pieces. It is then that we can take those small equal pieces and create our rectangle. So the area of the circle is equivalent to the area of the rectangle, which we could find the area of the rectangle by doing base times height. But what is the height of this rectangle? The height is the radius of the circle, which we'll represent by r. What is the length of the base of this rectangle? For that, we'll have to turn to the circumference of the circle. And it turns out that the base of the rectangle is equivalent to half of the circle's circumference. How do we find the circumference of a circle? We find it by taking 2 times pi times radius. But we want half of that. So the twos will reduce, and we're left with the length of the base of our rectangle to be pi times radius. Multiplying that by the height, which is also r, we're left with the area of our rectangle to be pi r squared, which is equivalent to the area of the circle. So the area of any circle can be found by taking pi times the radius squared. Now the circumference of a circle can be found by taking 2 pi r, which would give us the perimeter of the circle. An arc of a circle is made up of two points on the circle and all of the points needed to connect those two points with a single path. So an example of an arc would be arc xz over to the right. The measure of an arc if we wanted to find the measure of that arc, xz, it would be equivalent to the number of degrees that it occupies. So we think measure and degrees go together. All the way around a circle, we know that it's 360 degrees. The measure of an arc and length of an arc are two different things. The length of the arc is finding the actual length of that yellow arc, which is a fraction of the circle's circumference or portion of the circle's circumference. Please keep in mind that the length of the arc and measure of the arc are two different things, so they are not equal. Now let's discuss a sector of a circle. A sector of a circle is a region that's bounded by, and before we fill in the rest of it, let's look over here at the diagram to the right. I added two points on the circle in the center of the circle. So this sector would be sector LPH, which is a portion of the circle's area. It's a region that is bounded by two radii and an arc of the circle. It almost resembles a piece of pi. 
or slice of pizza, whatever you want to think about. And the area of the sector can be found by taking a portion of the circle's area.